See, I'll see it's a pretty nasty prolapse. So I'm just gonna try and push it back in here now. This side of the vulva, but it just pop it back inside. So for anyone that's interested, I'll just give you a quick look at how to solve a prolapse, a pretty bad prolapse, as you can see, using a rope. No spoons, no harnesses. I learned this technique from a vet many years ago, and it helped to save a sheep of mine that was stitched. She kept pressing, ripped the stitches, stitched again, so that's what actually stitched the vulva, a horrific thing in my mind. I used to use it myself, stopped using it. After using the rope, never used the needle and, and thread or tape since that. Straight into it, I'll give you a look. So I'm just gonna use the headlock here. So this is probably one of the most useful jobs for the headlock. I'll just give you a look at it here, how it clamps on to the gate. You just adjust the bar here like this. Set the height of the head yoke itself. So we'll just catch her here. So the chain just goes around the back of her head. She's nice and firm there. It's easier for me to work on her here. I'll just open this gate back out of the way. There we go. So approximately 16 foot of half inch rope. So I'll just show you the techniques. A couple of knots to tie in it, but it's not that difficult. So I have the sheep secured in headlock. It's a headlock or a headstock that I'm making myself in the sheep school shop. Have a look at it. Here's the link. So get your two ends of the rope like that and you have the loop on the other end. Feed this in behind the front leg. Get the loop right in the middle of our back and feed the rope through the loop like this. You have a loop here. So you want to have it reasonably tight. No delicate areas here anyway. So the rope is running down the middle of the sheep's back, like so. And just around about in the middle of the back, maybe just around the kidney area, tie a knot in the rope. So the two loops come through, tie a knot like this. Quite easy to move the knot if you have it in the wrong place. I'm a little bit far back there. So you want the first knot around about here. It's kind of halfway between the tail and where the loop is landing on our back here. So then, so tie another knot just above the tailbone, just here. You want that knot landing just above the center of the tail, like so. Just gonna put on my gloves for this because I'm gonna be pushing in the prolapse now. So if you've ever had the experience of trying to push in a prolapse, it's quite a lot of pressure. You're always trying to push it out all the time. It's quite difficult. And I've actually, when I was learning about sheep, I've actually bust my fingers can happen, it's not going to be a good end, and let's put it that way. So, how does the rope run now? I'll just try and move you around and give you a better look here. So you have the rope looped here, not in the middle of the back, second knot just above the tail. So the rope comes down each side of the tailbone. So it starts at one side. Now I'm not actually going to push in the prolapse yet. I'm going to do that in a minute. So the rope comes down one side of the vulva, like so, one side, and then you cross it over here, so it goes between her udder, or her bag, as it's called in some parts of the world, it comes between her udder on this side, and her leg, back up around the front of the leg, and this first knot that you tied here, tie it off, make it off here. You can just tie any kind of a knot on that. I tend to tie up the slack here in another loop that's quite easy to open when the time comes. So the other side now, down this side of the vulva, 
cross it over again, cross it over, and between the other and the leg on this side, bring it back up here, just move you over here, so it comes back up on this side, and then you meet this knot in the middle here, and you tighten it again. Just tie it off on this knot here. So the next job is because, as you can see, this is actually quite dirty. I'm going to clean it off. So what do I use for that? So just a bottle of water, a little bit of dead oil, antiseptic. Uh, it's just going to give it a bit of a wash here. Half a cap full of dead oil into my bottle of water. Lovely job. Now, see, you'll see it's a pretty nasty prolapse. It's it's a quite big. It's quite big. So I suppose what happens is if you put it back in the way it is. There's quite a bit of dirt, and muck, and hair, and straw, and stuff in that. So we'll just use a little bit of this um, dead oil to give it a bit of a wash. Have a clean rag here. So just clean it off as good as I can. So you don't want to do much scrubbing here. You just want to give it a bit of a wash. So that's pretty clean, it's not bad. Look, you don't want to go too mad. I find if you go scrubbing and it ends up starting to bleed, it's just not nice. So the rope is now attached. What the rope actually does is stops the sheep from pressing. It stops from trying to push it back out. So I'm just going to try and push it back in here now. We'll see how it goes. So you can see the sheep is trying to press a little bit here. I actually don't have them ropes tight enough. They've slackened a wee bit. So I'm just going to tighten them up a wee bit here. When the sheep is pressing, the rope definitely isn't tight enough. So I'm just going to tighten it a bit. And you might have to do that maybe a after a day or two. But you want to have it fairly tight. Going to try and press it in again here. Up. So that can happen. The sheep can lie down just for a minute here. We'll get her up. Now we'll just wash it off again. Now, so I think the secret in this part of the job is whatever you do, don't use the tips of your fingers. Use the palms of your hand to push it in. So a little bit of steady pressure. You see now she's just starting to struggle a wee bit. So a little bit of steady pressure. It'll eventually let go. It's quite a mess. But it just pop it back inside. Again, trying not to use the too many pointy fingers. There we go. So that's it back in. So as you can see there, the rope has stopped the sheep from pressing. Once I adjusted it again there and applied a bit of steady pressure to it, the sheep will eventually let the pressure back inside, pop it back in. So you see the rope 
coming from this knot down here, crossed over, this side crossed over and back up and tied here. So the other thing worth mentioning is that when the sheep lambing happens, this sheep is about 17, 18 days out from lambing, that rope will stay on her and if she happens to prolapse again, just repeat the process. Tighten the rope a little bit again and push her prolapse back in. Now the rope can slacken a bit when it compresses into the wool and all the rest. But the other thing worth mentioning is this sheep can actually lamb with that rope on her. The lambs can come out as normal. The rope kind of re restricts her from pressing a little bit, but it means she can still lamb. You'll see it's not actually mad tight, pretty tight, but not mad tight. No, out you go. Come on, out you go. So you'll actually see the sheep pee in here. The problem with a prolapse is when it's out, it blocks her urethra and she actually can't pee. So the other thing I forgot to do was painkiller. So I have a bit of Medicam, two and a half milliliters of Medicam, because it's not the nicest thing in the world. So just looking after her here. So that's my prolapse repair technique. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.